All right, guys, I'm going to be making a video on the extra quiz re review I gave you for volume. There's, I think, some tough questions in here. I tried to make them a little bit challenging. Hopefully, we enjoy this. So the first one says it's a trapezoidal prism. I know the picture's not great. Honestly, this line should be more like that. It looks more like a frustum now. It's not a frustum. It's a trapezoidal prism. The front and back are the trapezoid bases. So how do we get the volume of a trapezoidal prism? Well, it's a prism, so it's the area of the base times the height. And they just gave us those numbers. So the area of the base is 361 meters squared. They gave it to us right there. Times the height is 12.5. So that's just 361 times 12.5. How about that? So that is 4512.5. Done. Number two, for the same picture above, so the same trapezoidal prism, if base 2 is 28, so I'm going to draw the, the base out. So when they say B2, what are they referring to? They're talking about the trapezoid. So something like this. So if base 2 is 28 and the height is 19, find the length of one of the legs. Oh, okay. So we go over here. Um, we know that the area is 361, so it's a trapezoid. They tell us that it's isosceles. So the area of a trapezoid is 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. The numbers we know, we know the area is 361. We know that we're looking for base 1. We know that base 2 is 28, and we know that the height is 19. So how do we undo all these things? We would have to do times 2, that's gone, divided by 19, that's gone, minus 28, that's gone. You have to do what's inside parentheses last. So if I type all that in, 361 times 2 divided by 19 minus 28, I get 10. So this base would be 10. But the goal is to find the length of one of the legs. Okay. So the leg would be this number. So I would drop a height over here. The middle part would be 10. And we're working on the wing. So if the whole thing's 28, 28 minus 10 is 18, these would have to be 9 each. Remember, if it's isosceles, the wings are the same size. So the hypotenuse would be the square root of 9 squared plus 19 squared. No, there's no GCF there or anything, so I'm just going to type it in. 9 squared plus 19 squared. And I get the square root of 442. That is the exact answer. If I change that to a decimal, that would be 21.024. And that is the approximate answer. Fun problem. Next one, find the volume of the figure. It's kind of an interesting shape. You could cut it this way or this way. It doesn't really make much of a difference. I don't care how you would do it. Um, I'm going to cut it this way, though. So I need, I'm going to do the blue side over here. I need the height. I need the width. I need the length. The height all around is 8. We know that from over here. The width here is 10, right? That's the same number. So we know that the blue side is going to be 8 times 10. But then we need this entire length. Well, they tell us this is 18 and that this is 6. So 18 plus 6, we know that all of this is 24. So that last number is 24. So that's 80 times 24. Type it in real quick. I get 1920. Well, let's do the other part. part. We've got to add on. Let's call it the green side. Well, those numbers are going to be 12. We know the height's still 8, and then this number would be 6. So it's 12, 6, and 8 would represent that. So that would be 12 times 48. That would be 576. Add those together plus the 1920, and I get 2496. So just dissect it up, cut it up, and move along. Nice. Um, next problem, we have... What is the maximum volume of a pyramid that can fit inside a cube with length 6? So I'm going to go over here. Um, let's see. That's not what I want. I want a, what did it say it was? It was a P2. 
pyramid inside of a cube. I looked up this earlier, but it went away. Okay. Doesn't really matter which picture we pick. Is there a good one? Pyramid inside of a cube. Um, I know I had a good one earlier, but it went away. Here, we'll go with this one. This might be the one I had, actually. So that's a pyramid inside of a cube. So let's copy that image. Obviously, you wouldn't have this option on a quiz, but just so you can understand what it's supposed to look like, but you should be able to kind of visualize a pyramid inside of a cube, and it's the biggest one possible. Um, it says there's only one shape the base could be. Yeah, if it's the biggest one possible, you want the base to be the exact same size as the cube, so it's going to be a square base. The side lengths of the cube are 6, 6, and 6. So for the pyramid, which is all they're asking about, Volume is one third BH. So it'd be one third times the area of the base, which would be 36, right? Six times six times the height. So that'd be 12 times six, that would be 72. And that's all there is to it. You just have to understand what it would look like, the biggest possible pyramid inside of a cube. Find the diameter of a sphere. Sorry, yeah, find the diameter of a sphere, if that's what we know. So we know that the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So they're telling us that 3369.2827 equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. I need to solve for r. So think about all these things I have to undo. I kind of talked about this in the last video. But we have to do times 3, so that's gone. We have to divide by 4, so that's gone. And then we have to divide by pi, so that's gone. But wait, it's cubed. How do we undo a cube? We do a cube root. Make sure you do a cube root. So it is the cube root of 3 times 3369.2827 divided by 4 pi. And I get 9 point, if I round, be 9.300. But they want the diameter. So that would be the radius. So the diameter would be 18.600. And it didn't tell us what to round to, um, so I went to the nearest thousandths, but I mean, it's basically 18.6. Find the volume of the figure. Will do. They tell us big diameter is 24, so I know that big R is 12. Little diameter is 15, so little r is 7.5, and the heights are going to match. This is a cylinder with a cylinder cut out. So I'm just going to do the cylinder minus the, the big cylinder minus the small cylinder. Big cylinder minus small cylinder. That's going to leave me with what I need. That's pi big r squared times h minus pi little r squared times h. And that's it. So 12 squared times 20 minus pi times 7.5 squared times 20. So 12 squared times 20 would be 2880 pi minus 7.5 squared times 20 would be 1125 pi. So 2880 minus 1125 is 1755 pi. Let's go! That's all there is to it. Um, that'd be the exact answer. They didn't tell us how to answer it, but if they did want the approximate answer, the approximate answer would be 5513.495. And that is the approximate answer. All right, next question. It says the basis of a frustum have diameters that are one inch and a half inch respectively. So we're talking about a frustum. The bases, the diameters are one inch and a half inch. So if the diameter is one inch, then the radius is one half. This radius would be one fourth. So we know that big R equals one half, little r equals one fourth. The height of the frustum is half an inch. So what we're going to do on this question is draw a right triangle with a bar. Big radius is one half. Little radius is one fourth. The height is one half. We need that number. 
So we're going to use a proportion to solve. That's going to be x over 1 fourth equals x plus 1 half over 1 half. That is left over bottom equals big left over big bottom. So we distribute. That would be 1 half x equals 1 fourth x plus 1 eighth. Then we would subtract um, 1 half minus 1 fourth would be 1 fourth x, and that would equal 1 eighth. So x equals 1 half. Right? I just multiplied 4. 4 eighths is the same as 1 half. Okay, so now we have our numbers. So now we do our volume. It's going to be 1 third pi times big radius squared times big height. Well, big height would be the whole thing, which would be just 1, minus 1 third pi, minus 1 third pi times little radius squared times little height would be 1 half. Um, so I'm going to type this in, be 1 third times 1 half squared times 1. So this would be 1 twelfth pi minus 1 third times 1 fourth squared times 1 half. And that would be 1 over 96 pi. So 1 over 12 minus 1 over 96 is 7 over 96 pi. And that is the exact answer. And if I were to get the approximate, which it doesn't ask, but just in case, 0 0.229, that would be the approximate value. Oh, dear. All right. Moving on. An ice machine at a hotel makes ice in the shape of a frustum. They are the same size as the frustums in part A. So we just did part A. These are the same size frustums. So we already know that volume. The machine has a rectangular prism space that holds the ice. The dimensions are that. Everything's in inches. We pay attention. We don't worry about it, but we pay attention. So there's 3,000 of these. All right, so the machine... Oh, man, my handwriting's good. So the machine... What would that look like? That would be 10 times 7 times 13. So 10 times 7 times 13 would clock in at 910. So the machine holds 910 inches cubed. So our situation here would be 910 minus 3,000 of the frustums from the last problem. Well, 3,000 times 7 over 96 pi is, so that would be 910 minus 875, oh my, 875 over 4 pi. And that would be your answer. That is the exact answer. Now, that's, they usually will ask you to round in a situation like this, so 910 minus... 875 over 4 times pi, when you round that, you get 222.777. And that is the approximate number. All right, we're killing it, loving it. Find the volume of the resulting solid if it was rotated around the dotted line. So if I draw the reflection... It would look something like this. And this would be cone, cylinder, and hemisphere. So we're going to work on those parts, but first we need to work on this right triangle. Do you see it? I hope you see it. There's a right triangle here where this would be the radius and the height of the cone. Also would be the radius of the hemisphere also be the radius of the cylinder. So that, we need that radius bad. So right triangle, this is 6. We know that this angle is 45, so it is a 45, 45, 90. So it's 6 divided by root 2. 
So both of these sides are 3 root 2. Okay. So once we've established that, let's work on it. We're going to work on the cone. The cone is 1 third pi r squared h. That would be 1 third pi times 3 root 2 squared times 3 root 2. Now there's root 2s and pi's. I'm definitely leaving the pi off it in my calculator. Let's see if it handles this. 1 third times parentheses 3 root 2 squared times 3 root 2. And it, it handled that just fine. That's 18 root 2, but don't forget there's a pi on it. I just left the pi off in my calculator or else it wasn't going to give it to me. Um, the next shape we're going to work on is the cylinder. The cylinder is pi r squared h. For the cylinder, those numbers are pi. That would be 3 root 2 squared, and h would be 10. So that would be 3 root 2 squared would be 18 times 10. That's going to be 180 pi. So we've got to add those. And then last, we've got the hemisphere running out of space, but the hemisphere would be 2 thirds. Why 2 thirds? Because it's half, and it's pi r cubed. 2 thirds, half of a sphere is 2 thirds. So that's going to be 2 thirds pi times 3 root 2 cubed. So 2 thirds times, I'm leaving the pi off, times 3 root 2 cubed. And I get 36 root 2. Don't forget there was a pi on there. Okay, these are unlike terms, but the first one and the last one will, will work for us. So if I focus on the first one and the last one, you notice that they both have a root 2 and a pi. I can add those. So that, those together would be 54 root 2 pi plus 180 pi. And that is the exact simplified answer. I'm really out of room, so I'm going to go somewhere else. But if I type that in, 54 root 2 times pi plus 180 pi, that would be 805.402. And that is the approximate value. Whew, fun question. All right, next one. It says... The figure above represents an inflatable log that people inflate to have a fun time at the lake. It is suggested to fill each log from 85 to 95% of its capacity. You have an air compressor that can be used to inflate a total of 8,400 units cubed before it overheats. How many complete logs can fill? How many complete logs can fill to 95% capacity, and how many complete logs can fill? to 85% capacity. There are two distinct answers. All right, so let's start with the 95%. Um, so if we're looking at this, we have the capability of doing 8,400 at most before we overheat, and we're gonna do 95% capacity. So that would be 95%, that'd be 0.95 times our answer from a second ago. So it'd be times this. Whoop, make a bigger fraction there. So that's how many we could do. So when I type that in, 8,400 divided by 0.95 times 54 root 2 pi, I get 12.27 or 12.2 something, okay? So I can't do 13, but I could do 12. After 13, it's going to overheat. So I could do 12 at 95%. And then let's do the other situation. Um, it would be 8,400 divided by, and this one would be 85% of that same thing, 85% of the total capacity. So when I type that in, I get like 10.98. 
I could not do 11. I will have overheated. So I barely don't make it, but I can't do 11. I could, on, I could only do 10 at that capacity. So I could do 10 of them at 85%. So 12 at 95% and 10 of them at 85%. Those are the two things they're looking for. You are cooking lobster for the fam. You own a cylindrical pot with a diameter of 0 0.4 and a height of 3 fifths meters. You have filled the pot up to 5 centimeters. Sorry, you have filled the pot with water up to 5 centimeters from the brim, the top of the, of the pot. You're cooking five lobsters with an average volume of 1,300 centimeters cubed. When you put all... Oh, I messed up. Should be five, right? All five in the pot, what is the volume of the water that will spill out of the pot? So we talked about this last time or earlier. At some point we talked about this. I don't know. But this is in centimeters cubed, and these are meters. I'm going to change the meters to centimeters. So 0 0.4 times 100. Um, 0.4 times, what, is, what am I doing? Why am I typing that in? It's 40. And then 3 fifths times 100 is 60. All right, so we got a cylinder here, a cylinder pot with a diameter of 40. So that means the radius is 20. So we know that diameter is 40, so the radius is 20, and the height is 60. But the only height we care about, so right now it's filled up, what, at 55? Because it says it's 5 centimeters from the top. So right now there's 55. We have another 5 to go. The 5 is actually the only thing we care about. So let's talk about how much space we have. Let's talk about the free space. The free space would be pi r squared h. It's a cylinder, but the height would be 5. So pi times 20 squared times 5, that would be 40 times 5. No, that would be 400 times 5 would be 2,000 pi. So that's how much space is left in the pot right now. How about them lobsters? The lobsters are going to be an average of 1,300, and there's five of them. That would be 1,300 times 5. That would be 6,500. So, so what's happening here? So how much water is going to spill out? Well, obviously, this is a bigger number, right? Not by a lot, though. So it's going to be 6,500. That's how much the lobsters take up minus... The 2,000 pi, that's how much space there is. So let's see, 6,500 minus 2,000 pi. And it would be 216.815. That's the volume of the water that would fall out. So this would be the exact answer. And this would be the approximate so I took, this is how much space the lobsters take up. This is how much space there is before water starts pop, flow overflowing. So I subtract the two, and that's how much water would actually have to overflow in order for the lobsters to go into the pot. One more question. It says, the bases of a frustum have circumferences of 12 and 20 millimeters. So let's see here. So frustum... So the bases have those. Those are the circumferences. So that means that the diameter is 12, therefore the radius is 6 for the small one. And that the diameter is 20, therefore the radius is 10 for the big one. The slant height of the frustum has an angle of elevation of 70 degrees. Ooh, the slant height has an angle of elevation of 70 degrees. What is the volume of the frustum? Okay. So we draw our, our triangle situation. We do this every frustum. We know we have 6. We know we have 10. And we know that the angle of elevation is 70. There's definitely more than one way to do this. I'm just going to show you the way that we kind of did in class. So you don't have to do it this way. If you can think of another way that still uses the, this situation, let me know. But... What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this right triangle. So we're going to do it 
maybe a little bit of a longer way. So the 70 is that angle there. We would know that this distance is 6, which means this part is 4. So we have a right triangle with a 70 and a 4. So that would be the tangent of 70 equals x over 4. Well, I'm going to call it, I'm not going to call it x. I'm going to call it h because I'm going to use x later. So h would equal 4 tan 70. All right, so over here, this would be 4 tan 70. And I'm going to call this x. So now it's a normal frustum question. It's going to be left over bottom equals big left x plus 4 tan 70 over big bottom 10. And then you cross, multiply, and solve. If it was me, though, remember you can reduce vertically or horizontally. I would reduce. That would be 2 times 3 and 2 times 5. Cross multiply, we have 5x equals 3x plus 12 tan 70. And then we subtract, that would be 2x equals 12 tan 70. So x equals 6 tan 70. So this would be 6 tan 70. All right, time for volume. Let's go. Last thing on the review. The volume is going to be one-third pi times big radius squared. Big height would be 10 tan 70 minus one-third pi times little radius squared times little height. So that would be 10 times 10 times 10. That would be 1,000 tan 70 over... Wait, 1,000 tan 70 over 3. Don't forget your pi. 1,000 pi tan 70 all over 3 minus, that would be 216 divided by 3, uh, 72. That would be 72. Don't forget there's a pi tan 70. So when I subtract those, I get 7. That would be 784 pi tan 70 all over 3. So that is our answer. That is the exact answer right there. If I type that in, I get 2255.687, and that is the approximate answer. There we go. That was a fun review. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys next time.